air marshals who handcuffed him. Stop resisting. Stop resisting. NTSA resuming self-defense classes for flight crews. U.S. airlines are on track to record more cases of air rage in 2021 than in the past 30 years combined. In June, this Delta Airlines flight from LA to Atlanta was diverted after an unruly passenger tried to access the plane's PA system. Two months later, passengers on a Frontier Airlines flight from Philadelphia to Miami duct taped an intoxicated man to his seat after he groped two flight attendants and got into a fist fight with a third. The surge in problem flyers is causing headaches for carriers, passengers, and airline employees. Unfortunately, I've been able to see two of these in person and it's very unnerving. When somebody freaks out an airliner, there's, there's no 911 to call. Nobody's coming to your aid. It's scary. It's It's been very, very difficult for flight attendants. And this has been the most troubling and um, the the most stressful time in, in the course of my career. And I think really in the course of all of the aviation. And it has been 11 months now that people have been dealing with this major conflict. As of December 2021, there were more than 5,700 reports of disruptive passenger behavior on U.S. airlines, compared with a typical year of about 100 to 150 cases. There really is no precedent to compare what's going on in 2021 uh, with previous years. So what is causing the rise in chaotic and sometimes violent behavior aboard planes? And what impact is it having on the nation's carriers and flight crews? According to Andrew Thomas, a best-selling author on aviation, the number of air rage incidents picked up steam during the early 1990s as more Americans took to the skies. In that period when we went from you know, flying a few hundred thousand people a day to what it is today, which is several million people a day, 30,000 takeoffs and landings uh, each day in America, an incredibly expansive system. And so the more people you have in involved in anything, the more you're gonna get the human condition. And in this case, the human condition can be reflected in safety and, and, and comfort, uh, as well as stress and strain and, and anger and rage, et cetera, et cetera. According to Thomas, in addition to more flyers, climbing rates of mental illness, alcohol, and drug use, as well as a ban on smoking, were contributing factors to the rise in air rage incidents at the time. That increase caused concern in some quarters. In the two-year period prior to 9-11, there were 36 cockpit intrusions on U.S. airlines. COVID-19 brought with it its own unique set of challenges. Following a steep drop in passenger demand at the onset of the pandemic, by November 2021, the TSA had notched a pandemic-era record, screening more than 2.4 million passengers. And along with those additional flyers, flight crews reported a massive spike in verbal attacks from visibly drunk passengers as well as incidents of shoving, kicking seats, throwing trash, and defiling restrooms. So what's led to the increase in bad and sometimes violent behavior? One of the biggest flashpoints is mass compliance. In February 2021, the TSA mandated travelers using public transportation, including planes, trains, and buses, to wear a mask. By December, the FAA had logged more than 4,100 mask-related incidents. I live in Ohio. Uh, a red state, and I have not worn a mask really uh, since sometime uh, late last year. Uh, the only place I wear a mask is at our university, Burr State University. I have to teach in a mask, our students wear a mask. I don't wear a mask, and I don't know anybody else who wears a mask anywhere else, uh, except now when I travel. And there's a lot of people in America that are coming from places like this. Alcohol is another factor. What we do know is that when we have the alcohol being served on the plane, we have a problem because people who maybe have already been drinking get a little belligerent about getting more. And the people who just have that casual drink and maybe are not even um, in conflict are having a harder time complying with the safety instructions that we're giving them. In August 2021, Southwest Airlines extended its ban on alcohol after one of its flight attendants was attacked and lost two teeth. American Airlines has taken similar steps, suspending in-flight alcohol service in the main cabin until January 2022. The FAA has also warned U.S. airports to monitor alcohol sales, especially to-go cups, which have proliferated during the pandemic. So during COVID, a lot of airport concessions were starting to sell um, to-go cups so you can walk around the airport. Um, and maybe if you have a long flight delay, you know, sitting with you know, a, a beer will relax you, but that 
is something that has been flagged as as something that needs to stop or at least be curbed. Airports have started to put signage uh, at the bars and restaurants and also on the glasses that they're serving the alcohol in. That has been a step forward, but there's still too much pushing of that alcohol. Another issue, a lack of business travelers has forced airlines to target leisure travelers to fill empty seats, many of whom are first time flyers and are not as familiar with the rules. And on a normal airplane, maybe a third of it is business travelers. The, the important thing about that is that they're used to the air system. They travel all the time, so they don't get surprised if they have to wear a mask or if the, they know that when the flight attendant says sit down, they sit down or put on your seatbelt, things like that. Other causes of disorderly conduct cited by flight attendants include flight delays, routine safety reminders, and flight cancellations. Analysts say a return to large crowds could be another factor. But the most egregious cases don't even have anything to do with masks. It's people acting out because uh, they've been told that they need to put their seatbelt on or they need to put their seat up or any type of instruction. And, and they're becoming aggressive and um, not wanting to comply with any safety instructions. So if I'm all of a sudden taken from an environment where I'm not around anybody and I'm told being around people is a bad thing, to now I'm going back to air travel, where that's completely the opposite, where I have people just on top of me in my face. There's no six feet. Most, most of the time, you don't even get six inches. As of December 21st, there were 5,779 reports of disruptive passenger behavior on U.S. airlines in 2021, compared with just 100 to 150 cases in a typical year. And while the surge is massive, the actual number could be even higher. There are, are cases where um, crews might have not reported it to the airline, um, or the, the cases don't even like make it to the FAA. It was kind of settled on board, um, or what have you. So, so the number of, of these incidents could actually be much higher than what we've seen. According to analysts, prior to 2021, air rage incidents were rarely prosecuted by authorities. If you're a law enforcement guy, there's no benefit in these cases. There really isn't. The, the, the media forgets about them. You know, only the really, really bad cases are the ones that you read about six months later when somebody was prosecuted to the fully. And that's usually somebody really hurt somebody on a plane or did some horrible things or a celebrity. But if it's just some idiot who's being drunk on a plane and you land in Cleveland at seven at night, man, it's like, you know, we don't, you know, I don't want to deal with this. I want to go home. And unfortunately, that's been the case for thousands and thousands of these cases the last 25, 30 years. In 2021, that changed. In an attempt to curb the wave of violent passenger incidents, in January, the FAA launched a zero tolerance policy with fines up to $37,000 per violation. One incident can result in multiple violations. For instance, in April, the FAA proposed a fine of over $40,000 for a passenger who allegedly sexually assaulted a flight attendant. Upon arrival, the person was arrested for resisting arrest and public intoxication. By November 2021, the agency had proposed fines totaling over a million dollars to dozens of passengers and initiated over a thousand investigations, up from just 146 cases in 2019. Airlines have also taken additional steps to punish bad actors, including banning certain travelers. As of September 2021, United Airlines had more than a thousand people banned from flying. Delta had a no-fly list of more than 1,600 people. Those measures appear to be working. As of September 2021, the FAA reported the rate of unruly passenger incidents was down about 50% from the beginning of the year. According to the agency, though, the air rage rate is still more than double what it was at the end of 2020. If an airline has found that someone is unfit to fly, that should be shared in real time across the industry so that someone has a time out, so that we're not just sending a passenger who's been behaving badly in one day over to another airline where crews are then facing that without any information about this passenger that's coming on board our planes. And then a due process to determine whether or not that should be something that's applied in a more permanent basis or for a longer term basis. Flight attendants have arguably one of the toughest jobs in aviation. In an effort to cut costs following the 9-11 attacks, many airlines cut back on staffing to FAA minimums, meaning fewer crew members were available to deal with problem passengers on flights. 
The pandemic era plunge in air travel saw some airlines furlough employees. Other airline workers left or retired. That means fewer flight attendants for every passenger who is on the plane, fewer gate agents for every passenger who is coming through the gate area, and fewer eyes on passengers to be able to keep issues on the ground. According to a flight attendant survey, almost 50% of unruly passenger incidents in 2021 could have been prevented by identifying problems pre-flight. This has been a very taxing period on flight attendants. They started out the pandemic not knowing if some of their airlines were going to survive. Um, of course, airlines got billions of dollars in federal aid to essentially save their jobs. You have the, the health threat of the of actual COVID, maybe catching it on the job, job insecurity, your hours have been cut, um, then demand snaps back and your schedule is rapidly changing. The survey also revealed 85% of flight attendants dealt with at least one unruly passenger in 2021. Nearly one in five said they experienced a physical incidence and more than 60% said disruptive passengers use racist, sexist, or homophobic slurs during the incident. It has become something that flight attendants think about when they're putting their uniforms on every day, uh, that this is likely going to be something that they face during the day. And it's also causing people to not pick up as much time. And that's where you've seen some of the staffing shortages. It's really about those overtime hours that people have been unwilling to work or unable to work because they just can't stand to go and take that abuse every day. The problem could intensify as airlines ramp up hiring for what is expected to be higher domestic capacity in 2022 than the industry saw in 2019. So a surprisingly large percentage of the employees that people will see in airports and even onboard airplanes are going to be new employees for the airline industry in the next year. And that has its own sort of safety and training kind of issues. A 10-year flight attendant has seen more things, reacts to things in a more rational um, way that de-escalates quicker than maybe a first-year flight attendant. So what can passengers do to help if an air rage attack occurs on their trip? According to Nelson, if you see something that's not right, alert a member of the flight crew as soon as possible. Another tip, don't get involved unless you're directed to do so by a member of the staff or there's imminent danger of someone getting hurt. There are people who just say it's not worth being a flight attendant anymore, right? It used to be a fun job where I dealt with a little bit of aggression on board, but for the most part, People were friendly and it was smiling. I could get to fly around. Now I run the risk of getting hurt or being involved in a dangerous altercation. And it's just not worth it anymore. I'll go do something else. And that's a, re that's a real risk for the industry is that it becomes harder to even recruit for some of the customer facing jobs. So we as passengers are complicit in this because we would rather pay 200 bucks to fly to Florida packed in like sardines with a smaller seat with no service amenities, uh, really treated like cattle. We'd rather do that. Our, our, collectively, the market has said this, uh, than, than the $600 bigger seat, more, get a meal, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, the market has spoken. So I, everybody's complicit in this in one way or another.